Shalom. This was the warm word of welcome with which Your Holiness greeted us, a delegation of the International Jewish Committee for Interreligious Consultation, when we met a week and a half ago in Castle Gandolfo in Italy. As we meet here, across the seas, we greet you in turn with the word Shalom, not only because it is a warm word of welcome, but because it means peace, the greatest blessing the Jewish tradition can conceive, and it represents a hope which all of us share. You greeted us there, too, as we greeted you, as we have been greeted today with the words of the psalmist. And the word then was of the 117th Psalm, the truth of the Lord endures forever. Emet Hashem Olam, and we all seek it. I welcome you, Your Holiness, on behalf of the Jewish organizations, religious and communal, who are represented here today. Organizations that have been in fruitful conversation with the Roman Catholic Church through the years. They include representatives of the American Jewish Committee, the American Jewish Congress, the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith, and the Synagogue Council of America, which is here representing the United Synagogue of America, the Central Conference of American Rabbis, the Rabbinical Assembly, and the Union of American Hebrew Congregations, which with the great aid of the Vatican Library has mounted the magnificent exhibition of Jewish manuscripts, which is now in this building, and which will later be touring the country. Also present with us this morning are the leaders of other major organizations in American Jewish life, as well as members of the Greater Miami Jewish Community. The men and women assembled here reflect the rich diversity of American Jewish life. We constitute a variety of religious and communal affiliations. We are American-born, and we are immigrants. Some are survivors of the Shoah, the Nazi Holocaust, while others have never experienced the dark shadow of anti-Semitism in their own lives. We come from all sections of the United States, and we come as full participants in the pluralistic and democratic society that has encouraged us to be proudly American and fully Jewish at the same time. Your visit to this country happily coincides with the 200th anniversary of the United States Constitution, a document that guarantees religious liberty to all American citizens and which has enabled all faith communities to flourish in an atmosphere of religious pluralism. This has made possible a free and flourishing religious life for all. Now, it's been 22 years since the conclusion of the Second Vatican Council and the proclamation and promulgation of Nostra Aetata. It was literally, in the words of Habakkuk the prophet, Chazon Lamoed, a vision born of the time and for the time. The broad teachings that emerged in 1965 have been further enriched and strengthened by a series of formal Catholic documents and pronouncements, some of them your very own. These statements have transformed Catholic-Jewish relationships throughout the world. And this positive change is particularly evident here in the United States. As the largest Jewish community in the world, we have developed close and respectful ties with the many Roman Catholics, both lay and clergy. And we value these warm relationships and treasure these friendships. We particularly cherish our relationship with the National Conference of Catholic Bishops and its Secretariat for Catholic-Jewish Relations. 
and in almost every place where Catholics and Jews live in the United States, we relate to each other in some organized fashion. We constantly exchange views and opinions, and as Catholics and Jews, we often share our positions, sometimes agreeing, sometimes disagreeing, but always striving for a spirit of mutual respect and understanding. Throughout the United States, American Jews and Catholics work in concert with one another on a wide range of social justice issues and fight together for global human rights and against all forms of racism and bigotry. Our common agenda has always embraced and our future agenda will continue to embrace the many crucial problems of the human family as a whole. One of the major achievements of our joint encounter is the shared recognition that each community must be understood in its own terms as it understands itself. And it is particularly gratifying that our Catholic Jewish meetings are conducted, therefore, in a spirit of candor and mutual respect. Such meetings, as you well know, took place last week at the Vatican and at Castle Gandalfo. And these conversations, though quickly arranged, were highly significant. UN church leaders listened attentively and discussed with us the deeply felt concerns of the Jewish community that were raised following last June's state visit to the Vatican by the Austrian president, Kurt Waldheim, who has never expressed regrets for his Nazi past. Obviously, the differences expressed at last week's meetings have not been totally resolved. However, the opportunity for us to express the pain and distress of the Jewish community in face-to-face -face meetings, and for you and the leaders of the Catholic Church to listen with respect and openness, represents an important confirmation of the progress our communities have made in recent decades. One of the significant results of these meetings will be an instrumentality to develop closer communication between our two faith communities. Our basic need, the basic belief of our Jewish faith is the obligation to mend the world under the sovereignty of God, the takein olam b'malchut shaddai. To mend the world means to do God's work in the world. It is in this spirit that Catholics and Jews should continue to address the social, moral, and economic, and political problems of the world. And your presence here in the United States affords us the opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to the sacred imperative of tikkun olam, the mending of the world. But as we mend the world, as the forthcoming High Holidays remind us, we must also mend ourselves. And a meeting such as this is part of the healing process that is now visibly underway between the two communities. It's clear that the teachings proclaimed in Nostra Aetata are becoming major commitments of the Catholic Church and under your leadership are being implemented in the teachings of the church and in the life of Catholics everywhere. Catholics and Jews have begun the long overdue process of reconciliation. We still have much to do because Catholic Jewish relations are filled often with ambivalences, ambiguities, and a painful history which must be confronted Yet in a world of increasing interreligious, interracial, and interethnic strife, the progress in Catholic-Jewish relations is one of this century's most positive developments. 
we nonetheless, of course, remain concerned with the persistence of anti-Semitism, the hatred of Jews and Judaism, which is on the rise in some parts of the world. And we are indeed encouraged by your vigorous leadership in denouncing all forms of anti-Semitism and by the Church's recent teachings. The Church's repudiation of anti-Semitism is of critical importance in the struggle to eradicate this virulent plague from the entire human family. Anti-Semitism may affect the body of the Jew, but history has tragically shown that it assaults the soul of the Christian world. And all who succumb to this ancient but persistent pathology. We hope that your strong condemnations of anti-Semitism will continue to be implemented in the schools, the parishes, teaching materials and liturgy, and reflected in the attitudes and behavior of Catholics throughout the world. Greater attention, however, needs to be paid, as has been indicated to the Christian roots of anti-Semitism. The teaching of contempt for Jews and Judaism must be ended once and for all. The teaching of contempt, I put it in quotation marks, reaped a demonic harvest during the Shoah, in which one-third of the Jewish people were murdered as a central element of the Nazis' policy. The Holocaust Shoah brought together two very different forms of evil. On the one hand, it represented the triumph of an ideology of nationalism and racism, the suppression of human conscience, and the deification of the state, concepts that are profoundly anti-Christian as well as anti-Jewish. And on the other hand, the Shoah was the culmination of centuries of anti-Semitism in European culture for which Christian teachings bear a heavy responsibility. While your sensitive concerns and your noteworthy pronouncements about the Shoah have been heartening and moving, we have observed recent tendencies to obscure the fact that Jews were the major target of Nazi genocidal policy. It's possible to visit Nazi death camps today and not be informed that the majority of its victims were Jews. And so your letter sent last month to Archbishop John May, the president of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops, represented a deep level of understanding of that terrible period. We therefore look forward expectantly to the forthcoming Vatican document on the Shoah, the historical background of anti-Semitism and its contemporary manifestations. Many Catholic schools, happily, are already undertaking this work by teaching about the Holocaust, and the efforts are underway to develop a specific curriculum about the Shoah for Catholic students, and this material is being jointly prepared by Catholic and Jewish educators. And yet, even though there was a destruction of many of the great centers of Jewish learning during the Shoah, there's been a remarkable renewal of Jewish religious life throughout the world. And this renaissance of the spirit is taking place not only in the United States and in the state of Israel and in other lands of freedom, but in the Soviet Union as well. Many Soviet Jews are discovering that the covenant between God and the people of Israel is indeed irrevocable, as you yourself said last year in the Grand Synagogue in Rome. And the struggle of Soviet Jews to achieve freedom is of course a major concern of the Jewish community. And we appreciate the great support that American Catholics have given to this court. The return to Zion, the reestablishment of Jewish sovereignty in the land of Israel, take a paramount place in Jewish self-understanding today. Because of the importance that the state of Israel occupies in the mind and spirit and heart of Jews, whenever Christians and Jews meet in serious conversation, Israel is at the center of that encounter. And the reemergence of an independent Jewish state onto the world stage in 1948 has compelled Christians and Jews 
to examine themselves and each other in a new light. We therefore must express our concern at the absence of full diplomatic relations between the Holy See and the State of Israel. We do welcome the recent statements that Vatican leaders from Vatican leaders declaring that no theological reasons exist in Catholic doctrine to inhibit such relations. But we strongly urge once again that irrespective of other considerations, full and formal diplomatic relations be established between the Vatican and the State of Israel. Such a step would be a positive and constructive contribution by the Vatican to the peace process, a gesture to the Jewish people as a whole, and it would send a strong signal to all nations that the Holy See recognizes Israel as a permanent and legitimate member of the family of nations. Let me say as I move to conclusion that one of the most welcome results of the recent Catholic Jewish encounter has been the recognition by, Catholic, by the Catholics that Judaism has continued and deepened its unique spiritual development after the separation of the Christian church from the Jewish people some 1900 years ago. And a meeting such as today's is a vivid reminder that we live in a historic moment Clearly, as the two great communities of faith, repositories of moral and spiritual values, Catholics and Jews, we need to move together in this new moment. The last quarter of a century has irreversibly changed the way we perceive and act toward each other. And in our age of great possibilities and great challenges, we do have a compelling need for a chazon lamoed, a vision for the time. As we meet and as we part, we perhaps may make this vision our own if we take to heart the words with which the students of Rabbi Ami in the third century used to part from one another. May we behold our world in our lifetime. May our hearts be set on things eternal. May our hopes be builded through future generations. Let our hearts meditate understanding, our eyes shine with the light of knowledge, our lips indict wisdom, and our feet hasten to do the will of God, the ancient of Dick.